And now, TSPN presents Open Mic Friday with Mike Spence and Butter. Welcome back, Open Mic Friday with Butter. I have to make sure I mention Butter because she's uh, half the show. She'll be on for the Butter break. Welcome, John Vale from the Animal Control Thank you, Mike. group here in Am Amador County Animal Control. And um, that's a big, you know, service that we have here in Amador County. And I want to just really welcome you to the show, John. I know you've been on TSPN before, but this is open mic. It's just a very relaxed thing. We have no backdrops, all the fancy flags. I get none of that. I have the pretend microphone that we'll pretend to talk into. We have a, I, I'm probably the only one that spins the wheel for a prize, though. So that's a pretty good, uh, pretty good thing. But our viewers have been able to uh, gain information on Fridays about different agencies and organizations um, where we live here in Amador County. And one of the most important things, uh, obviously, is animal control. We're in a very rural area, and you are the guy uh, when it comes to animal control. And, and I've been looking forward to uh, having you on the show. We have a wild animal we're going to bring out, spin the wheel, and we'll have to see whether or not we can put her up for adoption or something. <laughs> You have a lot of animals up there at the shelter. You guys do it all. A lot of animal control facilities, uh, some of them only are limited to doing, you know, bringing the animals in, but you're a full service. We have one location, and it's a full service location. That's right. Yes, our shelter accepts any domestic animal from Amador County. The animal and, and the uh, people turning them in have to be from Amador County. It is a county service, and... Uh, so we never know from day to day what may be coming in. We obviously generally have dogs and cats, but we have had uh, chinchillas and various kinds of birds and uh, guinea pigs, rats, mice. Uh, so yeah, we, we get uh, various kinds of farm animals and uh, it stays interesting that way. Well, don't tell my daughter about the chinchillas because she is a rescue chinchilla person. <laughs> we have rescue chinchillas that we've had for 10 years, I think. They live for an awful, chinchillas, you know, live for an awfully long time. You know, when you rescue an animal, you have no idea what their lifespan is and, and uh, how to take care of them. It's been a great experience, but she's rescued chinchillas for quite a while. Well, she must be doing a good job on uh, figuring out how to take care of them because it is pretty good lifespan. Yeah, she's done extremely well. We do have some pictures. I actually went up to animal control. I had never been to the facility before because I have kind of a soft heart for the animals. So I have never even been into a humane society or, or an animal control uh, facility. And I went up just to take some pictures and I told myself, you know, you can go in there without bringing any animals home. Please try to do that. And immediately I went in there and I saw these <laughs> little guys that you have up for adoption. And I can't imagine anybody going into animal control and seeing this. You know, that's Coco, right? And she's a, he's a uh, unbelievable little guy, but Barker. I could tell she was well, barking the whole time. Well, it wants attention, and yeah. once out of the kennel, it's not barking like that anymore. When it came in, it was totally terrified, had mats all over it, had lots of stickers in its hair, and within a couple of days, it figured out that we were actually pretty nice people, and now it seems to like everybody. Oh, yeah. No, you have incredible uh, facilities there. They're nice and clean, and, and the animals must be, you know thrilled to death to be off the streets if they're being uh, in there for adoption. I would imagine most of them are uh, candidates for adoption or they're animals that you get that are just not candidates. You can't clean them up? Or? Well, occasionally we'll get an animal that's not safe to put back out in the public, uh, that they would be dangerous to other animals or to people. Uh, so there are some that we do have to euthanize, but most animals that come in are uh, adopted or their owners. Some we get stray animals in that we don't know who they belong to, and owners come looking for them and uh, take them back home. Almost all animals can find a home, especially in a rural area like Amador County. You would think uh, people with a lot of space and things. There was a lady at the county counter, not to interrupt you, John, but uh, she she was saying. Uh, is that little dog with the three legs, the one with the missing leg, get adopted? And the other person said, yeah, they found a home for them. So I think almost, almost all the animals are uh, finding homes, hopefully. Yes, well, fortunately, this community has been progressive, and people have spayed or neutered and limited reproduction because at the rate that animals are capable of reproducing, uh, shelters like shelters in large cities can just stay inundated with animals and not be able to find homes for all of them. 
but it's because of the community. Uh, the shelter can maybe take a little bit of credit uh, in that, but it's mainly the community because if the community were supplying us with unlimited numbers of animals, we would have the same problem, but just on a smaller scale. Right. And you do the vaccinations and all that type of thing, uh, you know, on a, on a large scale. And you have a program that you, you brought some notes on in terms of locations throughout the county where you're doing uh, different vaccinations. Why don't you tell us a little bit about that program, John? Well, during this time of year, we do low-cost rabies vaccine clinics each year. And we've already had our first one. Uh, we have three more scheduled uh, between now and June. The next one's going to be at the Pine Grove Market on May the 22nd. They are all from 6 to 7 p.m. Um, following that, on June the 5th, there'll be one in, at Plymouth Park. And then on June the 19th, there'll one be, be one at Howard Park in Ione. And uh, local veterinarians participate with these. The rabies vaccination uh, is only $6 at these clinics. And the idea is if we can provide a convenient place at a low cost that um, people shouldn't have an excuse to not vaccinate their animals for rabies. Rabies uh, is always present in our community, in wildlife, in skunks and in bats mainly. And so when domestic animals have an unexpected interaction with those animals, they can be exposed to rabies. And so keeping them currently vaccinated is very important. It's always a concern. I, I, that's an important point because I think that people think of rabies and they think, you know, you always see those little signs on the post box that say, you know, rabid fox in the area, but it's mainly skunks and bats that are the rabies carriers, not so much the fox and raccoon. And how does that work? Correct, it is. Um, skunks and bats are known as the reservoir for the disease. There's always rabies present in their population, although most of them are not affected at any time. Um, in bats, it's probably substantially less than 1% that would test positive for rabies. But once they're out in the daytime, once they're down on the ground, once there's something wrong with them, then that risk increases tremendously because you can't tell by looking what the disease may be or what the problem may be that's causing them to be down. And with skunks, the same thing. If they're out in the daytime, especially the middle part of the day, uh, not acting normally, there's something wrong with them. It may be something else, but rabies is always a concern. Their uh, nocturnal behavior usually ends by 7 o'clock in the morning. It may begin at 6.30 or 7 in the evening. So in the summertime, you may see them in the evening or morning hours. But If uh, they're out running around during the day acting strangely, you yeah, know there's a little bit of a problem. It's good to stay away and keep yeah. your animals away from them. They're mostly nocturnal. Well, we're going to come back um, for the butter break. We have that wild animal I know you're dying to meet. Um, and um, we want to make sure that we come back and talk more about the Amador County Animal Control services here and we want to mention APAL when we come back and, and do all that as well and there are a bunch of events that are coming up this month so we want to make sure everybody stays tuned I think we have a few seconds left but uh, we have a lot more to talk about in the second half of our uh, show and the butter break is coming up so please stay tuned for uh, for butter and all the trouble she gets into you're watching Amador County's local television network TSPN